Hi guys, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern. And so we're gonna try for take two on a video tutorial on YouTube. So hopefully that will work. Let me go ahead and get started over here. I'm going to refresh my screen so I can see if you know I'm doing anything. And it looks like I am, so let's see. I've got to remember how to view on YouTube. Okay, so that's good, that's a start. All right, and so in theory, I'll be able to see any comments if anybody comes on. And if I don't see your comment, just say, oh, there's Roz, hi Roz, appreciate you joining. All righty, okay, I know, remember to watch my privacy okay so anyway this morning um, I saw a card over on France Martin's page and it is a double flip card and I was so intrigued by it that I decided to make my own and this time I instead of using the um, well she used a different set than I did but I decided to use the painted poppies um, and Peaceful Poppy stamp set, and then a little bit of the Parisian Blossoms specialty DSP. So look how this works. It looks just like a regular card. It is four and a quarter by five long, so it fits in a perfectly normal medium envelope. But then, look at it flip up like that. Isn't that so pretty? Yes. Very, very simple, fun fold. And so really, it's a matter of two cards that you hook together, and then, you know, uh, you decorate it and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get started. All of the, this will be my card tomorrow, so you're just getting a sneak peek of it. And all of the card cuts and product listing will be out there on the blog page tomorrow. So do not worry. I appear to have a little bit of excess glue right there. Hang on, let me get that off before I make a mess. I'm going to make a mess. There we go. Okay. All right, so let's see. Oh, hey, Amy, glad to see you. Hi, Karen. I popped up, yay! So you've um, subscribed. I'm pretty sure that's why I popped up, and I thank you very much for that. Okay, so let's put this aside. I've got everything cut out already, and you're going to need essentially two card bases, and I'm using basic black in this case. So this is the larger piece four and a quarter by eight and a half, and I'm gonna score it and fold it at five and a half inches. So let's go ahead and pull out our Simply Scored board. Hi, Jeffy. Hi, Karen from Philadelphia. Got two Karens on. Okay, so this is the um, larger, this is the card base portion, flip number one, if you will. This is this piece. And so I'm gonna score it and fold it at five and a half. And then the inside flip piece is three inches by eight and a half, and I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. Kind of makes sense if you think it through for just a half a second, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and put this aside. We are officially done with that. All right, now we're just gonna kind of put it together. Hello, Patricia. Hi, Cheryl. Appreciate you joining. Hi, Kathy. Glad to see you today. I'm cold and my fingers aren't working right. Woo, woo. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll make our first um, fold here. Let me pull out my bone folder. And then we'll give this a little rub too. Okay, now I have cut some pool party mats. I liked pool party for this, hi Barbara. And um, I got glue everywhere. And then some of the Parisian Blossom Specialty DSP. I decided to use this kind of softer non-foil. You know, the Parisian Blossoms has um, champagne foil accents like this one. Let me see. Can you see that? Isn't that pretty? So pretty. So this is going to be the back of the card. There. Like that. And then I'm going to use this pretty piece as my front flip. And then I've got um, Whisper White for the, uh, for the front and the inside of the flip portion. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble. Now, this one is a little bit different for me than a nor one of my normal cards, other than the fact that it's a flip. Thank you, Pat. Or Roz, I appreciate that. The DSP is gorgeous. Hi, Debbie. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use a little liquid glue. What I was saying is, is usually I put the card front and the inner liner together, and then the very last step for me is, is putting it all on the card base. Um, but in this case, it's very helpful to have everything a little bit assembled before we start to decorate the front of the flip, just because that way you get to see where your elements can go without impinging on the flip. And that will make sense. That was like the most convoluted sentence ever, but it will all come together in a half a heartbeat. All right. So my sentiments are from the Peaceful Moments stamp set, and then I've used the Painted Poppies stamp set to decorate. And also, as you saw at the beginning, the Poppy Moments dies to make my embellishments. Okay, so I just use a little liquid glue and put that on the back. And, mm-hmm. See how quickly that happens? Oh my lord. Okay, so then I'll just take this little small piece of DSP. And obviously this is just a way so you can see this technique and you could definitely use any stamp set, any paper, but I am kind of a fan of this whole painted poppy suite, aren't you? And to add it to the, uh, what I kind of wanted you to see is that the painted poppies work really quite nicely with other DSPs. You don't have to necessarily always use the... <laughs> Sad that I think I understood your convoluted... Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> See, you guys are starting to come to my side of the world, right? Ah. <laughs> uh, Susan, thank you for joining. Hi, Marty. Usually watch on Saturday replay on YouTube. Yay! Well, Marty, I'm glad you were able to join. And just so you know, the comments are sitting on my computer kind of off screen. And sometimes I get busy yakking and busy putting cards together and I miss a comment. So if you have a question, one of the joys of being kind of live with everybody is that I can try to help answer questions. But if you have a question and I miss it, put it on again, and it'll eventually scroll up to where I see it when I'm looking at it. Okay, there's flip number one. Easy peasy and done. Okay, so now I'm going to pull out my stamp Stampopotamus, and we're going to stamp our sentiments. Now, you can see I've put the sentiment up in the corner of my front, and I've, uh, I've left my stamps on there from when I built the card to start with. So it's already lined up. Um, you'll notice I'm sticking it way out here, and that is because I have the deluxe foam mat on here. And when I'm using a cling stamp, if I push this up against the corner, then that tends to it tends to make the stamp impact the cardstock kind of on an angle. So when I'm using, instead of pulling this out and putting it back and all that, all I do is I just when I'm using a cling, I stick my cardstock out here, I still use the lineup of the uh, of the ruler there, and then I use my magnets to keep it in place. So it's the same kind of concept as sticking it in the corner. It just works a little better. Okay, so we're gonna stamp happy birthday in um, tuxedo black, right there. And I'm gonna give that one more little, little bump. And then I'm ever so carefully going to remove that without touching that ink. Remember, Tuxedo Black takes a hot second. Just telling you that right now. It takes a hot second to dry. All right, now I have a second piece of Whisper White somewhere. I know I do because I cut it. There it is. Okay. Now, my second sentiment is a, another sentiment from Peaceful Pop Moments. And see how handy that is? I had both stamps on my acrylic and I could just flip it around, stamp happy birthday, flip it, and I'm ready to roll with the second um, sentiment. Definitely one of the handier aspects of the Stamparatus. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. The Stampopotamus is making its way around the world. That's great. Okay, whoops. Always put your magnets on, just saying, because if you want to do a second stamp, I promise that booger will move. Okay. And we'll do that again. 
like that. And again, I'm going to not touch that. I don't, I guess it's something in the chemical makeup of the, of the tuxedo black, but it does take that and actually several of the darker colors. Well, thank you, Kathy. It takes several of the darker colors a little bit longer to dry than maybe would be fun. Okay, so now I'm gonna do one more thing just because I'm trying to get a little ahead on the drying scheme. On the inside of the flip where I put my second sentiment, I used basic gray to stamp two of the poppies, okay? And when that's all dry, I'm gonna color it with my um, Petal Pink Stampin' Blends, okay? So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp those so that everything is kind of drying along at a a pace and then it'll all be ready when we're ready to go and since I've got it out why don't I just really get ahead because I'm crazy that way and we'll do the envelope too no naked envelopes all right that's ready to go okay good so I can put this away you know until I mess up something and, and I will I am certain I will because that's just how I do business Okay, all right, now we have some leaf pieces to adhere together. So let's do that while we're waiting for that tuxedo black to dry. And I pre-cut everything and put it in my handy die cut holding device, also called a ramekin. And we're going to cut them out. Now let me tell you what I got here. I've got a flower middle. These are all with the um, Poppy Moments dies. I've got a flower middle out of champagne foil. I have a second flower middle out of black foil. Now, you could reverse that. You see how it looks on my card? Okay. Hey, Linda. Appreciate you joining. You see I've got the large piece in the champagne and then the smaller top piece in black. You could swap that and make the bigger piece in black and the top in champagne. All up to you, of course. Okay. Then I cut, um, these, are the these are the leaves that we've cut. So this leaf is a solid leaf, and then it's got a detailed leaf that adheres to it. So I've got some of both of these. And then there's a small solid leaf and a detailed leaf that adheres to that too. So I've used that as well. Um, now, these go together. So this is a pool party solid with a champagne foil detail. And then I've got some solid small leaves and pool party details like that. We'll make those like so. And then, how pretty are these? I cut these. These are, um, this is the detailed leaf cut and this is the two of the solid leaf cuts. And this is Pool Party Vellum from the new So Very Vellum Specialty DSP. And that is coming in the second celebration uh, release, coming on the 3rd of March. Yay, it's so pretty. You get um, soft sea foam, Pool Party, and um, Purple Posy. You get two 12 by 12 sheets of each color in a pack. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a $50, that's a $50, let me just double check here. Yes, that's a $50 reward. Okay, so I'm gonna do some quick and yet highly accurate, quick and yet highly accurate gluing together. Thanks, Kathy, these leaves are great. This is a great die set. I really, really like it. Okay, now, let me just tell you a little something about foil. I've had people ask me how to get glue off of the foil without marking it. Uh, the easiest answer is you're really not very, easily. It's not easy to get it off. It tends to smear and mark it up. If you get it quick enough, you can sometimes use like a damp rag, um, but it's hard. So the, the best advice I can give you is if you're using glue and foil, take your time, hold your mouth just right, stick your tongue between your teeth, and be careful. Okay, try to get it in the in the spot you want first off, first jump, so that you don't have to smear it around. And then, you know, give yourself a break. If you get a little bit of glue here or there, nah, you can probably tuck it in. As many collage pieces as I use, it's probably tuck inable where you can't even see it. So just take your time 
I'm probably moving a little faster than I should just so that this isn't a two and a half hour YouTube video. Because who wants to do that on a Thursday afternoon? Although as much as it's raining here, there's not a whole heck of a lot else to do but craft. So I will. I'm going to just enjoy my time in my craft room where I am not wet. Because it is a wet booger out there. Hey Shirley. I'm glad you found me. I know it's a little confusing for a minute as we get used to switching from Facebook on Saturday to YouTube on Thursday, but we'll all figure it out here pretty quick. We will all figure it out here pretty quick. And at some point I may just switch to straight up YouTube videos. I'm not sure, we'll see. Okay, got one more to glue and then I'll put my flower together. And by this time my, uh, my tuxedo black ought to be good and dry and I can just start putting everything together. If you're doing a collage card, it really, really helps to get all of your elements ready. And let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher the French, but in cooking, that would be mise en place, I think, something like that, which means get all your stuff together ahead of time before you start cooking, okay? And that is the same with these. The more things that you have already prepared, then you're ready to roll. You're gonna get storms this afternoon and into the weekend. Oh, darn it, man, that sucks. I hope you uh, are safe and that they aren't terrible storms. Debbie, you're waiting on snow, yuck. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, yeah, I appreciate that. That's a very kind thing to say. I would rather be watching me than working too, I suppose. Depending, of course, on what you do and how much you love it or don't love it, right? I'm. All right, here we go. Do you guys realize, can you even believe we're halfway through celebration already? Isn't that crazy? It just is flying by. Any second now I'm gonna start talking about making Christmas cards, I'm certain of it. That's just insane. The years are just, the, it's just going like crazy. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Oh, shoot, fire, let me pick that back up. I knew I'd forget something. Okay, there's not very much glue on there. It'll be okay, it'll be okay. What I did before on my sample is I took my, yeah, I think you're right, Roz. Most of the country's getting crazy weather. I took a sponge dauber and this is petal pink. This is a solid petal pink piece. And I took some petal pink ink and just rolled it around the edges of that flower so that it would have a little depth. And the good news is, is when I made the prototype, I forgot to do it the first time too. And so I'm holding true to form. That's good. At least I am nothing if not consistently goofy. I like it, that's great. Okay, so there we go. Would that have made a huge difference if I had not done that? Eh, maybe not, but I would know and every time I looked at this card, I'd be like, gosh, I wish I had sponged that flower like I meant to do. There we go. See how much better that looks? It's just so much better. So much better. Just so much better. Totally better. Okay. Now quit messing with that, Mary. What are you doing? Okay. I'll get that when it gets dry. Okay. 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 Oh, wait. I can uh, go ahead and also put this on too. All right, hello from Virginia. Only get to watch after live from Facebook. This is great watching you live. Enjoy your projects and your weight loss journey. Thank you so much, Kimberly. I appreciate it. Karen, you live in New Jersey. You're gonna have snow and you're just gonna have to suck it up, buttercup. All right, and now I'm gonna use one of my new little tiny uh, dimensional doohahs right here. And actually this one may not even be small enough. I have to have a little bit smaller. This one takes a really, really smaller. Thank you, Patricia. It really does look better sponged, huh? It was worth doing. Okay, so to pop up this little tiny thing, I've got like a half of a half of a dimensional. I could also pull out a mini dimensional and that would work, but that would require me to dig it out of my box. I'm not gonna do it, just not, can't make me. Okay, and then stick that on like so. Okay, now it is time to put the card together a little bit so that we can decorate it. And first what I'm gonna do is um, 
put my uh, my panels on my <laughs> put my panels on my pool party mats. Oh, you said you were saying you didn't want Christmas yet. Well, I don't either. I'm not ready for Christmas. I, oh, good God, Mary. What did you do? What did you do, Mary? Well, you did that a little bit too big, I think. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let me double check. Glad, glad for you to know that stuff happens even to the professionals. Ah, now I see why my... Uh, why that was off. Okay, I've got this a little too big, so I'm going to use my damp cloth. And I'm going to wipe down some glue. And I'm going to stick it in my trimmer and cut off the extra eighth that I inadvertently left on there. And hey, guess what? The other one's going to be the same way because I borked them both up. I'm pretty certain of it. So let me double check the other other one. Let me double check. Look at you cut. I know. I know. A double, double, double cut. What in the world is going on? Has the earth shifted on its axis? Has there been a shift in the force? I don't know. Look at how much better that looks if you cut it the right size. <laughs> what a dorkus. Well, thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. I waffled on purchasing this bundle. Think I'm going to rethink. Absolutely rethink that thought. Because that that thought, you need to rethink. Uh-oh. Okay, wait a minute. Hang on. I bet it's on the back. No. Wait a minute. I just lost my dang thingy bobber. My doohickey's gone. There's its mat. There's the inside. I'll we'll be hogswoggled. Hang on a minute. Shoot fire, people. Shoot far. Hang on. It'll come to me. I'm going to see it in about a half a second. If you see it, tell me where it is. Do you see my sentiment? Huh. Well, I'll be dingleberried. Okay. Hmm. Well, doesn't that just beat all? That beats all is what I'm saying. You know what you know it's right in front of me, right? Look at the front of your envelope. Yeah, but oh there it is. You mean the one that I've now ruined because now it has glue on it? Mm-hmm. Thanks, Amy. Gosh. I'm gonna employ my eraser on that one. Or I'll have to read it. What in the name of God? What did you do? Ugh. Okay, we have what we like to call in the industry a technical difficulty now because Mary is borking this by the numbers. Let me see if I can get this right. Now. <laughs> okay, it's got to be two and seven eighths. Hang on just a minute. One moment, please, while we experience technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, what a dork, I'll tell you. You know, there's just days when there is not some floss. Did you guys ever see that poster back before memes when the only entertainment we had was posters? Back before memes, there was one and it showed a uh, either a, I think it was a stork, and it was standing there, and it had the, um, I am getting discombobulated. <laughs> uh, it showed a stork standing there, and he had uh, dental floss wrapped all around his beak, which in these days of environmental sensitivity is probably not as funny as it was then, but the caption of the <laughs> of the poster was, some days there is knots in the floss. And I can assure you that that, what you just witnessed there, was a floss moment. <laughs> but what that should, you, hey, I have an idea. Let's pretend that I meant to do all of that as a teaching moment so that you could see that shiitake mushrooms happens 
and you just have to recover. You know what I'm saying? You just kind of have to recover from it. And so that's what we just did, is we sort of recovered. Now I'm gonna go ahead and measure this real good so that I can make sure that I cut the right size. <laughs> and we'll see what we can get here. But of course, because it is the day, I don't have a piece sitting handy, but oh, there's one right now. Okay, all right, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine, just fine. Yes, here we go. Now, before I put any glue on, I think I'll just do a quick fit check. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I like layers. I'm a big layer person. If, if I know this isn't your first time to see me, so you know this, Kathy. I like my layers. I am not afraid of a second stamp on a card. And... I oftentimes stick my cards in with a gift, so it's in a package anyway, and that extra little bit doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But for me, it's worth it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put that in, and I'll color that in just a minute. I'll color it with my blends in petal pink. Petal pink. And it'll be so pretty. And I'm just going to use my um, light and dark petal pink. And you do my ever so, you know, um, technical coloring by coloring the center of all, everything, coloring it all in. If I was making a cupcake or a cookie, I'd say I'm flooding that area with light petal pink. And then I'm coming back with my dark petal pink around the edges. And then a little bit more to blend it all in. Wow, that was amazing. I'm sure the Art Institute is going to call any second now. Be like, Mayor, Mayor, could you please teach a master class? We are begging you to teach a master class. Because, man, you're good at that. Whoo! I was the artist that Stampin' Up! was thinking of when they made these. The artist who is not an artist but wants to look like one. Yay for Stampin' Blends! Woo! Hey, Rosie! Glad you could join. All right. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, the... Probably the only technical difficulty of any of this card, regardless of what it just looked like, because nothing I did there was easy or hard, it was just goofy, is making sure that before you adhere your t second flip, that you make sure you have it lined up how you're going to want it. Now, you could center it like this, but for this card, I pushed it over to the side a little bit like that. Okay, so that's how it's going to be, so I'm just going to um, hold it where I want it and raise it up like that. And then here's a little trick if you want to see it. You see what I've done here is I've lined the top of my card up with one of the grids on my grid paper. And then I can see that the top of this card is lined up with this second grid mark. So all i got to do is put it right back there and I'm ready to go. I know they're gonna be talking. <laughs> Actually, what they want they're gonna want me to do is a measuring class <laughs> because my measuring skills just went to heck in a handbasket. Sure did. Just went to heck in a handbasket right there. Very easy to confuse two and seven eighths and two and three quarters. It is. Okay, and so now I have just glued that to the inner liner. And you can see how the flip is, is building up. Okay, so now I'm just going to glue class on the use of dimensionals and whether you should use full or half dimensional. Oh, so it would be like a debate class. I like it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is just kind of build our collage. And I'm going to dry fit it first so that I can see whether I've got it where I want it and put it how I want it. And then we'll just... Uh, Start gluing. 
easy and also peasy. We'll push that over like that. You do want to be sure you can absolutely come off of the the uh, small flip, but you want to be sure that your card your leaves are inside the large card front, okay? Because otherwise it'll be really, really, really hard to get it inside your envelope. Just saying. All right, let's see. I think I'm going to use this. Look how pretty these are. I love these pool party vellum flowers. They're so pretty. I'm going to put that there. These are like the baby's breath in a bouquet for me. They're the, the foliage and the extra good stuff. Yes, it's a dry fit. I think in class on technical terms. Well, okay, I could do that. Maybe like a glossary class. Yeah, a glossary class. Yeah, I'm down for that. And we'll do some over here. All right, like so. And then we'll put one more of the vellums. Let's see, let's put this like that. You know, this is a very technical portion of the card. Um, I'm using the TLR methodology. If you're not familiar with that, that's the that looks about right technique. Very, very scientific. Um, it's very important. If you are not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you need to join right away if you want to employ the TLR technique. It's really for demonstrators. Okay. And so then that's going to be like so. And my flower will be over the top like that. And I'm going to have a little bow. Yeah. So that'll be good. I like it. I like it. Like so. Yes. Okay. So now in order to glue that down, I could teach lots of stuff. Uh, exactly right, Kathy. Picture taken. Once you get this, take a picture of it because you've got a camera. Almost all of us have a camera right in front of us on our phones, and you should use it all the time. Take a picture. Use the picture so that you can recreate your masterpiece. Remember when you're using liquid glue on vellum, you want to hide it. So put it down towards the bottom where it will be covered because it will show through. I've had very, very good luck. If you need to adhere vellum, especially this pretty vellum with the, uh, with the, uh, the dry embossing on it, you can use a glue dot if you keep the glue dot as flat as you possibly can. My husband would say keep it flat as a flitter. I've never actually seen a flitter, but I am certain they are very flat because he, he uses that term quite a bit. So you would keep it flat as a flitter, and that tends to hide it pretty nicely, which is which is a nice little bonus. All right, so we're now at this point, we're just gluing stuff down. And I now have glue all over my fingers. So <laughs> it's all coming up. <laughs> okay. All right, keep going, Mary. Keep going, just keep going. Just keep on plugging. Anyway, I blame the rain. I think the rain is <laughs> making me goofy. That's it, it's the rain. It's the rain, our whole, our back pond is so full. It is overflowing the pipe and running into the back. White Line Creek is its name is where we're, it's flowing. It's at the back of our property and it is flowing out there now. We have got rain and rain and rain. The geese love it. They're all hanging out in the pasture and the pond and we've got ducks swimming in the front pond and even the girls are enjoying the, the wet, I think. They all come, they come in in the evening just soaking wet, which means they have not stood in their, in their run-in shed that is filled with hay. They have not spent the entire day in there. Okay, so now that that is there, we're gonna make a bow. You see that my sample has a bowish looking shape. And it's not a real bow, it's a faux-ish bow. And I'm using a uh, Whisper White Solid. Oops, come here. That one got away from me. It's Whisper White Solid Baker's Twine. I'm going to show you this this technique. Start with a tail down here, and then just do two 
big loops and leave a tail and cut it. Okay? And then you can just lay it down and put a glue dot kind of roughly where the center of your bow is going to go. And that's going to be right under our flower. So I'm going to put it right there like that. And then take your, your loop like this and make a big figure eight. Try to get the, the cross sort of in the middle of the two loops. And then you can adhere the middle of the loop with that glue dot. And then kind of play with it a little bit. Put your tails out of the way. Play with it to make it symmetrical or asymmetrical, whichever makes you happier. Depends on my mood. Some days it's even on both sides and some days it is not. And then I'm going to use some dimensionals. And we're going to pop our flower over that bow. Okay. I do like how the addition of the Baker's Twine bow adds just another, it's a light layer. There's not a whole lot of weight to it. And we're going to put, let's see how I like this flower the best. I'm going to play with my bow a little bit. Like that. Get that dimensional cover out of there. He's trying, did you see him trying to hitchhike? Good Lord. What if I'd sent an additional dimensional cover out with this card? That would have been bad. That would have been so bad. Okay. And all I did right there was just pull the, this loop a little more so that I would have a little more under that side of the flower. And we'll put that down like that. And then that's there. And then I'm going to use a champagne uh, rhinestone. I love these things. I hope, so hope, so hope that they're in the next catalog. Please stampin' up. And there you go. There is our card, like so. And you could put a, a rhinestone in here if you wanted to. I don't think it needs it. And I'm gonna use my uh, little eraser right here right quick. Got a little bit of something, something right there. Not sure what it is but I will get it off of there. If I can't get it off, guess what I'm gonna do with it? You got it, I'm gonna cover it with a rhinestone. <sighs> cover it with a rhinestone. In fact, I'll just do it, because I, I can, because why not? It'll look like a little pink dot of dew. It'll be a dew dot. There we go. And now that I have two rhinestones on there, I'm gonna put a third one, the rule of threes. There we go. Dunske. Now, let me just finish up my envelope. My envelope. I've already got my flower on the front, so let me go ahead and color it. <laughs> Good for you, Linda. I'm glad you're going to buy this bundle. You need it. You need it. And we'll just color the... Uh, what I did there is I put my, um, my acetate from the old Stampin' Majig inside so that when I color with Stampin' Blends on the front of my envelope, the color does not um, bleed through. Okay. And again, my high technique. Here again, I've said it before, I'll say it again because that's how everybody learns. When you're coloring against the edge of an envelope like this, don't do a lot of scrubbing right there because it will bleed to the back, even with the acetate in there. So try to kind of flick by the edges, if you will, so that you don't get um, color on the back of the envelope flap where you don't want it. Just That's just a technique I have learned in the past couple of three years. Well, or however long we've had Stampin' Blends. Okay, there we go. See how I'm not going, I'm not getting right against the edge there? Okay. And there is that. And then we'll put our, um, thank you guys, I appreciate it. We'll put our uh, DSP on our flapper. 
and it will be Dunske. Dunske, I tells ya. And I apologize for the, <laughs> for the goat roping that we were doing there for a minute. I don't know what in the world I was thinking. I just don't. But I promise you I will have the card cuts correct for you on my blog tomorrow. I promise. Because I'm going to double and triple check them before I before I post it. Because, you know, I, I can see it's that kind of a day where I would put the wrong thing entirely. And if you look at it and it looks really goofy, just send me a, a <laughs> just give me a contact with a, hello, goofy, you've screwed up the dimensions again. Hello, McFly. All right. And there we go. And look, I can tell this is the one we just did because it's got the extra rhinestones. Done. I love this double flip card. Perfectly perfect. And we're ready to go. Alrighty. Thank you all for joining. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you putting up with me. We'll see you next week. I'm going to try to do Saturday nights on Facebook at 7 p.m. Eastern and Thursdays. We'll do a just after lunch bunch, uh, one o'clock Eastern time on the YouTube channel. All right, see ya. Have a good rest of your week and a great weekend. Bye-bye.